Righto, tell you there champs, and let's talk about the ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 4 16 incher. Yes, you can now order it. And have a look at this. Oh my God, I thought in Australia we got taken from behind and got the old Jolly Roger. Have a look at this. These are US prices, okay? In this video, I'm gonna actually talk about the mistake I done when ordering this X1 Extreme. I'm gonna compare it to the Legion 7i or just the Legion 7, which one is better for you if you're a content creator and a gamer because I'm choosing between these two, right? And there are some key differences and oh my God, there's a part on one of these laptops that costs $2 more than the other laptops and it opens up a lot more features. That's very interesting, I mean, stay tuned for that. Anyway, have a look at this, okay? This is the US prices. Now, I ordered it, it cost me about mm, just over $4,000 Australian. Yes, Australian, that's for 16 gigs RAM, as you can see here, 16 gigs RAM. But have a look at this, 3,800, by the way, temporarily unavailable. Now, if I have a look here in Australia, you can actually buy it and have a look at that, how much cheaper that is in Australia. This is a 3080, look here, 3080. For $4,600, I got it cheaper than this, by the way. This is with the Full HD Plus. You gotta add the good screen if you want the good screen on, which costs you like 500 bucks. And this is with the i9, okay, i9. I kid you not, two days ago they were up. You could buy them, and now it says temporarily unavailable. I don't know what the go is there. But you're talking about 3,879, which, let's do it. $5,200 Australian, that's without tax, of course. In Australia, we pay tax. And this model here has a 3060. Yes, it does have the good display, but it's got the 3060. The 3070 is 4,600 US, what? How much is a 3080 gonna cost? And here in Australia, 4,599. And by the way, actually just use this chat window here and you can actually talk to them and then get a deal, ask for at least a 10% discount, you'll be able to get that done. What on earth is going on in the US with these prices? That is just insane. All right, so anyway, first of all, let's talk about the Legion 7 versus the X1 Extreme. Now, both of these are premium laptops, which we'll sort of get into later. Why does one have this $2 part that opens up so much more and the other laptop doesn't have it? Because they are both premium. But anyway, here's the differences here. Different laptops, right? One's gaming, one is for content creation. But the Legion 7 with that 16 inch display, you know, 16 by 10, I'm thinking of maybe getting that laptop for content creation. And by the way, make sure you subscribe because that one is coming in very soon, the 7i, the Legion 7i, and I'll compare it to the AMD Legion 7. So that's gonna be very interesting to see which one's better out of those two. Let's talk about these two laptops. Which one would you buy? Well, I'm a content creator first and a gamer second. Very close between these two. What you can see here is you get Ethernet on the Legion 7, you don't get it with the ThinkPad, which is the one on the right. You get two Thunderbolts with the ThinkPad, you get SD card reader as well. And other than that, really, is there that much difference there? Not so much with the ports, but remember, with the ThinkPad, you can get the Nano SIM, so you can get the 5G connectivity if you want on the X1 Extreme. Now, before I get into the mistake I made with ThinkPad ordering, let's get into the CPUs. You can see here, it looks like there's two options here with the Legion 7. One of them is unlockable. So the 11980HK is unlockable. And here you basically have the locked version of that, which is the 11950H. Although the base frequencies are different, the peak frequencies are the same, 5 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, 3.3 versus 2.6. So there is a difference between these two because the ThinkPad on the right is 230 watt package, 300 watt package with the Legion 7. And that leads into the graphics cards. Of course, the CPU and GPU is gonna go harder in the Legion 7. You can see there by the wattages of the GPU, 130, 140, 165 watts. And of course, the same sort of GPU options here. With the ThinkPad, you don't have to have the graphics. You can just have Intel HD if you want. You can get an RTX 3050 Ti, 3060, 3070, 3080. Now there's something important about the 3060 upwards. I'll tell you about that in a second. There's something a bit dodgy they've done. They won't tell you the weight etc i'll talk about that in a sec i assume these are like a 95 water given that it's a 230 watt package i assume they're 95 watts i'll find out when i get it why well, don't they have the wattage here i have no idea but it's fair to say performance wise the legion will be faster but here's something important look at those chipsets there look at those chipsets there hm570 versus wm590 we'll get to that in a sec 32 gigs of RAM with the Legion 7, 64 gigs with the X1 Extreme. Mmm, very interesting there. I am going to test 64 gigs in the Legion 7. I don't know why 64 gigs wouldn't work. It should work, but anyway. 
you get two M.2s on the Legion 7, you get two on the Extreme, except there is an exception to that, which I'll get to. They are both PCI Express 4, or they at least have one PCI Express 4 slot. Now here's something important, battery life. You can see there in hybrid mode, 6.6 .6 hours with the Legion 7. That's what they're saying. A lot of people are getting more than that. I definitely get more than that with the AMD version. And it has an 80 watt hour battery in the Legion 7. You do have a 90 watt hour battery in the X1 Extreme and 10.7 hours versus 6.6 .6 hours. Well, I'll be testing that out for sure. As I said before, 300 watts versus uh, 230 watts. 170 watts is if you get a 3050 Ti and 135 watts is if you get the X1 Extreme without the graphics. Also, these are the slim power packs compared to the 300 watt huge one that you get in the Legion. Now, the big difference here is the displays, right? So for me, for a content creator, I just want 100% sRGB, which this gives me. They're both 16 by 10. I'm talking about the Legion 7 is now 500 nits brightness, 100% sRGB, 165 hertz, right? Has G-Sync. It is a beast of a display, right? But of course, with the X1 here, you get like really expensive displays. We're talking like 600 nitters there. 4K plus, 100% Adobe RGB factory calibrated only the 4k ones are factory calibrated and here is the big mistake i made i ordered this one the multi-touch one and i should have just ordered the bottom one it was like four o'clock in the morning and like i never use touch anyway so why i ordered the touch one i have no idea i should have just got the bottom one it's exactly the same display although maybe the coatings are better on the touch display i don't know but it is heavier and thicker i'll show you that in a minute so there's the differences between the two if you want the power you're going to go to legion 7 but the x1 extreme I mean, it has RTX 3080. It's got a 230 watt package and they both have vapor chambers. So they're both super powerful. They're more than powerful. And remember that that, you know, high quality display that you get on the X1, it is 60 hertz, of course. And the Legion 7 is cheaper. So more power, cheaper. The display is not quite as good unless you want the high refresh with the Legion 7. But the X1 is like the signature, the creme de la creme, best displays. But I want to talk about the chipset now on the left hand side we have the chipset for the legion 7 on the right hand side we have the chipset for the x1 there's two dollars difference 49 dollars versus 51 now maybe lenovo order a heap of 570s and maybe they get them cheaper so we're talking about the 5 to 70 chipset on the left so maybe they get three dollars cheaper four dollars cheaper and if they put it on a million laptops you can see that two or three dollars is going to be a big saving right but they're both premium products. Now, of course, the ThinkPad is the signature. The X1 is the signature. But have a look at this. Let's have a look at the chipsets. All right. $2 difference, as I said. Pretty much the same. The price, $49 versus $51. If we go down here, what's very interesting is it says PCI Express Revision 3. Well, we know that they actually are PCI Express 4. So, obviously, they've activated that. But it does say 3.0 revision here. Now, have a look at this. Maximum PCI Express lanes, 16 versus 24. So the X1 has 24 lanes of PCI Express versus 16. So that's a big difference, okay? So that means maybe the X1 Extreme uses 16 lanes of PCI Express for the graphics and maybe the Legion 7 only uses 8 lanes. I don't know. 8 lanes PCI Express 4 would be fast enough anyway. Maybe they both use 8 lanes. We'll find out when we get them in. But the chipset, 16 lanes versus 24 lanes. But it doesn't end there. USB is pretty much the same here. Maximum amount of SATA ports. You can have 8 with the X1 Extreme chipset. And you can have 4 with the Legion 7 chipset. So there's another difference. We also go down and we get here intel v pro you can't have that on the legion you can have v pro on the x1 extreme which is like a sort of enterprisey thing so they can manage you know laptops and that that's not such a big deal but we also get stable image so you get stable image here as you can see there you get that with the chipset on the x1 you do not get stable image on the legion chipset basically i think it's like you know when you go to school and you log into the computer you download stuff you install it and then when you log in next time it goes back to a steady state like a stable image and all the stuff you install is not there anymore i think that's what that stable image platform thing is so that's an enterprisey thing too but also here we have intel trust execution technology and on the x1 you get that 
and on the Legion 7 you don't. Now that's one thing I would want because this is security. Of course with enterprise stuff you will need that sort of thing. So I guess that $2, how manufacturers are skimping on you there with $2, they're giving you a much more capable chipset on the X1 just by adding a $2 cost and that just blows me away. Why not have it on the Legion? Maybe it doesn't need it, I don't know. But I mean, I wouldn't mind the extra security on the Legion 7 and of course, you know, more lanes is better. Now, let's have a look at this. You do not want to make these big mistake you can make, all right? First, I'll just show you the thing that annoys me is the size and weight, okay? So the touch model is 1.86 kilos. The non-touch are 1.81 kilos, all right? So what is that? 60 grams or whatever. But also you have a difference in the size. The touch model is not only thicker, it's heavier, right? So 18.2 millimeters versus 17.7 millimeters. And you'll see here, this is starting weight. If you get a 3060, 3070, 3080, I don't know how much weight the vapor chamber adds because those models have the vapor chamber. You also get the 230 watt power pack. But these weights are deceiving here because anything with 3060, 3070, 3080 is going to be heavier than this. So just know that. You're going to have to order the 3050 or whatever if you want these sort of weights. They definitely should show the weight of the one with the vapor chamber. So if you're thinking of buying one of these because of this, you know, really low weight for a 16 inch laptop, remember, you get a vapor chamber, it's going to be heavier than that. You get touch, it's thicker. Second thing is, I told you before, I ordered the wrong one. I should have just got the one without touch. It would be thinner and lighter. So I screwed up there. I could reorder, but these have gone out of stock and they're temporarily unavailable as you saw before. Also have a look at this, all right? So you've got the storage. If you want two M.2 drives, you have to get the 3050 Ti. As soon as you go to that 3060, 3070, 3080, you only get one M.2 slot. This is a big, huge deal. Not only do you get the extra weight if you get the vapor chamber model 3060, 37, 3080. Have a look here. You only get one PCI Express 4 M.2. So you can only put one SSD in here, all right? 3050 Ti, you can have two M.2s. You can have one PCI Express 3, one PCI Express 4, but you can have two. As soon as you get the 3060, you're going to get the vapor chamber and you can only fit one M.2. They need to tell you when you get a 3060 up, it's going to be heavier and you only get one M.2 slot. So anyway, I cannot wait to get these in, but I think it does suck when you lose one M.2 and you can see there how much more the displays cost. I unfortunately got the touch one. I don't want touch. I don't want thicker, heavier. It's already going to be heavier with the vapor chamber. I made a mistake. Uh, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.